Well, hello guys, this is Dave with Nomadic E-Biking Adventures. And I thought I'd quit make a little video today. We've got a uh, two broken spokes here. One on each side of the uh, bike here. So we're going to do a uh, in-depth video of how to uh, take the rear tire off. This is a JCON EV7 2.0. Um, I've replaced... There's one missing. Oh, I guess there is none there. It's just a hole missing there. Oh yeah, there's that's the one there. There's one there. That's where it goes. And one on the other side that broke the other day. So since we've got two spokes that are broken, we're gonna go ahead and get this replaced. Well, we got the time to do it. Um, so, first thing I want to do is uh, make sure the power's off. And this is the way I usually set my bike. I uh, usually set something up on the, uh, the bottom of the handlebars, but this seems to be working just fine. So, first thing I want to do is there's a power cable here I got lines we got landscapers working outside this place but anyways the, these are held on with a couple of zip ties snip those loose and then what you can do you can just there's arrows on here that they line up right so when we put this back together you're going to make sure those arrows are uh, facing each other but it's just a matter of pulling them apart and this one's kept with a little zigzag bracket take that off and then we bring this back to expose the nut on here and we're going to go ahead and loosen up these these nuts I'm going to take uh, my adjustable wrench and uh, see if we can get this. The first time you take these off, you may have to jump on it a little bit, but this one's been off so many times, it's probably uh, <laughs> this finger tight. So this is the cable that goes into your motor. Um, I'm going to loosen this one up and then this one, this guard, should come right off, depending which way it's going here. And you just loosen that up all the way. And we'll just take this guard that goes over to the derailleur guard. Set that off to the side. We got this backed out all the way. And now we need to go over to the other side here. And then take this little cover off. And loosen up this one. So then it's just a matter of lifting this out of here. And since you got the the chain in here, in fact, I'm going to put my uh, I'm going to put my gloves on. Hold on one second. All right. It's a good thing to, to carry a, a pair of you know, what you want to call these garden gloves or whatever, just to keep your hands from getting so dirty. But what you're going to do is uh, this chain will come off the sprocket so you can just bend that out of the way There's something else that fell off oh, it's gonna pop out good all right so once that gets loose I'm gonna clear this 
and there you got your your bike out bike tire I'm just gonna move this over to the side a little bit all right now what we want to do with this one is we're gonna to have to uh, deflate the tire so I'm gonna take the uh, air stem off and let me get one other piece be right back all right what we're going to need to do is take this we got a bottle of slime they give you a uh, a uh, stem remover that you can insert there now when you stick this in here you're going to feel it spin it around a little bit and you'll feel it grab and then go counterclockwise very slow so you start hearing it hissing out you don't want to do it all the way uh, because it'll you'll lose the stem so just let it gradually bleed itself out and this tire I just replaced well maybe about uh, 300 400 miles ago and you can tell the center is is getting worn down already I do a lot of gravel road and pavement so this one probably I mean if I wanted to I could easily get this thing replaced I mean we're gonna have to take this off anyway but Spin this up a little bit, get it going. I can hear it coming out a little bit faster. This one had um, about 36 pounds in it. I don't want to look at this thing to pop off. Is, um, if you lose it, you won't be able to air up your tire again. There, it's pretty loose now. Alright, let's see that. There's your stem, and I got slime in there already, so we're going to pick up a little bit of slime out of it, which is no big deal. But that's how it's uh, taken out. It's a nice, easy way to, to use it since they provide a stem remover. So put this in a safe location so you don't lose it, because you're going to need it uh, after we're finished doing our work. All right, so now the next thing we got to do, and what I usually do I was from experience, is I'll put this back in here again, so we can uh, we don't lose the stem into the, the tire. So what you want to do is just work this loose a little bit, so it unseeds. The other thing, now what you want to do is invest in a pair of, of these uh, tube removers. Uh, they come in handy. This is one of the ones I've got to go. So let's go over here once. And what you want to do is start 
one of the tubes. And you get about four of these in a kit. And they come in handy. And you can see it clips on one of your other spokes. So what you want them to do is is start the process of getting this tire over the, your first lip. Now this it might take a while to get the right combination, but you can see it starting to slip over. And let me see if we can get this thing moved over. Yeah, that will come out. So start the one side, get it off your rim. And then what you're going to do is you can probably get away with there's a metal or a covering over where the um, spokes are. But it's a lot easier just to take the whole tire off if you can. So what we want to do, spin it around. And you can take the, the inner tube off it as well. So you know, I guess we'll have to take this off. So I, the stem will go back through the rim. So this is still my original one. Um, I've had, you can tell that's probably where this, the slime was going through. Uh, I did pick up a wire that gave me a flat and that slime seemed to uh, work out pretty good. I've got spare um, tubes, but I'm not, you know, they're, they're about 25 bucks a piece. The tires are about 25 bucks a piece on Amazon. I'll put a link uh, below. But um, that's that. Set that off to the side. Then what you want to do, let's, uh, we've got two to replace, one on each side. So this is the one. Now there's a certain pattern for these for these two. The one that's broke is going over and it'll go into this one eventually. So what we want to do is that there's a um, there's a little dealio here that you can press up and get access to the um, you can do is bend it straight up and you can just lift it right out of it See where it busted off. You normally see that um, it'll slip through here. So let's uh, let's go ahead and get one, the other one replaced. But this is the T nut that goes through there. Now the easiest way to get this replaced is take your new one and if you remember this one it's going in this hole here and look at the pattern this one that goes in over here is going over this one not under it so you want to keep the same tension on it so what we're going to do is slide this through so it hooks and then we're gonna kind of 
uh, let's see how we want to do this. So it's going to go over like that. Okay. So the other one that we're going to do is let me get another one out of here. And what you want to do is, I guess it's a little bit easier, is once this is through here, you're going to thread this through the hole here. And uh, get that lined up with that hole. Get that moving in that hole. And start spinning and getting it threaded on your new one. You may have to Bend it a little bit to get it in. this is the right one because I've had two different ones before. I'll take this off for a second. So I'll make sure we got the right one here. No. Alright, so let's try this again. Going in this hole here. And we're gonna stick that down in there. And I wanna get my screwdriver where did we put that oh, nice. sometimes you can get this started Get that started there, and if you need to go do a smaller screwdriver, you can get that turned in there. All right, so it's starting to get tight. Now one thing you can tell with the spokes is you can hear the tone on it. So 
the other little gizmo that you need to have too is a little wrench like this spoke wrench and I believe it'll just clip on there and I think it's counterclockwise or is it clockwise yeah you can feel it tightening up there's no rhyme or reason of how do you do this but you want to get the same pitch on here so that's pretty tight there and sometimes it's good just to go around the wheel to see if any other ones have So that's, that's pretty good right there. So we're going to leave that. One thing you don't want to do is pull it too much. Because you, then you start uh, deforming your, your wheel a little bit. And that's where you get kind of the wobble in it. So it's, now it's kind of pulling the rim this way a little bit. Okay, so I'm happy with that one. And now we want to fix the other one on the other side. So, let's go ahead and... I had just taken some electrical tape to bind it down so it wasn't flopping, making a noise. So this is a good way to learn because the day is going to come if you do any writing. Um, that you're going to need to do this in the field. Not spokes aren't that big of a deal in the field, but um, you're going to need to maybe change a tire in the field. All right, so we're going to do this to the same thing. And if you look at this, the way these two are coming in together, if you look at this one, the right side on this one is going underneath, not over like the other side was. So this one eventually is going to have to come underneath and then through. So. <coughs> We can take this and bend this out of the way and it should pop right out. So let's get another one ready. Two different sizes, but I think. Just make sure you got the right dealio here. See, I think these were the smaller ones. I had. Originally, I had I got a thirteen. See, that's just a little bit too tight. So I'm going to get rid of these other ones because they're. I don't know why I kept them, but I've got. I believe these are the ones that came after uh, I got a response of uh, what size spoke there is for this this bike
Okay, so that spins on pretty good there. That's the one we want. So we'll take it off again. And I see. Let's uh, get this inserted. Where it's supposed to be going. It's a little kind of. I can't really. Let me see. Let me go to this one. So again, this one's going to go over. That's all right. GoPro overheated a little bit. We got that second one installed and uh, we got a tension on it. So our next thing is to put the, uh, inner, the inner tube back in again. And we're going to do get some slime on there. start that and then what I usually do is just so it doesn't pop back out again is put the uh, the cap back on so it doesn't slide through the uh, the hole now we still got the spigot out all right so take our tire and go ahead and slip the bottom in and it's just a matter of getting everything tucked back in again got this started All right, we got that in there the tube is in and now what you want to do is kind of squish both sides of it Sometimes it can be a little nerve-wracking. Let me see if I can just put this on the floor a little bit more. There, now it's starting to slip in.
All right. Got everything slipped in there. Now what you want to do is make sure, look around, that you make sure you're not pinching your um, your inner tube. There's our cap. So our next uh, step is to put the, uh, the valve stem back in. So what we're going to do is take our cap off. Set that off to the side. And then we've got our valve stem. You can see this flat part where this uh, is inserted there and then it, it just hooks up with it. And then you're going to be doing that, uh, just turning it clockwise. So once you got that inserted, go ahead and press on your stem. And just start turning it. Turning it the right way. Yeah, so the, to tighten it, it's going counterclockwise. So you get it down to a point there where it, uh, you got it in as far as you can get it. And then go ahead and recap your slime and set it off to the side again and let's go get our electric pump all right this is the uh, the pump that I got from Amazon and it's uh, it also acts as a charger also what we're gonna do is uh, get this threaded on here do is hook up your pump to your valve. Make sure you press in like I'm doing here on the left hand. And get it started. And then it's a matter of turning the pump on. And what you want to do is just insert some air into it. Just a little bit and then we want to go around and make sure we don't have the inner tube pressing up and getting pinched. And it starts expanding. And we'll turn it on again. Again, just a little bit of air on there. And just give everything a good squeeze. It's only maybe about three pounds in there. It, air in the tire right now. We're gonna. This rear tire has a PSI uh, of 40, so we're running mostly uh, paved trails now, so we're going to probably just knock it down a little bit um, to maybe like 36 and a half, maybe 38. We're not going to be running into any gravel or sand or anything, so... But after you're satisfied that 
We've got the uh, tube is not going to get pinched. Go ahead and start it up again. Oops. All right, we've got it uh, set at 38 and a half. And then what you want to do is take your pump off. Set that off to the side. And then we'll go ahead and put our valve stem cover on. One's, you see right there, it's got the rating on it of 40 psi. I don't know if you can see that. And we got it at 38 and a half, so it's just a tad underneath. So, there it is. All right, so we're going to get this mounted on back on the tire. Now, if you see on here, there's this inside groove is there's a little round piece in there, and that needs to line up with this uh, groove right here. So, and then the other thing that we need to make sure it lines up is the. Uh, the uh, brake disc that falls in between the um, the shoes so let's go ahead and get this mounted I'm gonna keep the washer on the outside let's move this over a little bit so the thing with this is Remember that this chain, it needs to slide in that chain right there. So we need to bring that down again when we uh, slip the wheel on. So let's uh, put that in there. Let's get it hooked on one of the gears. And there you can see that the... Uh, that you can see where this is uh, falling in the groove now so we'll go ahead and finger tighten this and the same thing for the other side just fall fell all the way down to the bottom there <laughs> and I almost I think I almost let me see I just want to make sure that, that yeah it's in there gotta make sure it was falling in between the uh... Oop. so Let's uh, get this side, give it a good tight turn. Just give that a good 
tug going up. <sighs> All right. So we got this on one of, on the outside, and uh, we're gonna loosen this up again because we got to put our uh, derailleur guard on. So that's going to sit over like that. We've got it finger tight right now. We'll take our wrench. This one's a little bit harder to get a good angle at it because you got the derailleur right there. Try to keep that derailleur guard in the proper direction. and tight. All right, so next thing I want to do is slide this back over the uh, nut right here. And while I'm thinking about it, I'll take your other one here and mount that there. So we got that. It's, uh, it's running pretty true. Alright, now the connection time. So, I mentioned before that uh, you got to make sure you line these up right. Here's, uh, here's the one arrow here. And here's the other arrow right there. So just make sure all your arrows line right up and give it a good squeeze together. Don't force it. And you can see the arrows are pointing right next to, to each other, so you should be good to go. In fact, let me pull that out because I gotta, gotta uh, get this in here. Again, make sure your uh, arrows are lining up to each other. Make sure it's in all the way. Because you get a, just a partial uh, knock. You're, if you've got a bad connection, you're going to have problems with your controller. So. 
So the last thing that we gotta do is uh, just put a couple uh, zip ties in here just to prevent this cable from wiggling around. I'm sure you, you know if you don't have one in the if you're doing this in the field and you don't have one, uh, it's not just remember to put one on there eventually. Well, this thing's I need some new ones. I don't need these gloves anymore. I don't really even need mine. See so that? Keeps your hands nice and clean. There's a lot of grime and dust and oils. So, that's, uh, I had a couple smaller ones in here. So what I, what I need to do is put a couple of these together so I need to get two on each. So one we're gonna start just for a little bit. we're going to put here I'm sure all the other cables that are in there are, are going to be cinched down with it also just going to put that on temporarily go. Got those cinched down and then take your pliers and snip off the ends just so it's not going to get in contact with the wheel. And there you go. You got spokes and a tire uh, showing how to like I say, the you know, first couple times, just take your time to do it. You're in no big rush. To, uh, you get more of a problem if you uh, do it wrong. But anyways, I uh, hope you don't have to change your tire too often, but it's not a bad idea to uh, get to know how to do it because sooner or later, you're going to probably get a flat in the, tire, in the field. So make sure you bring in your all your uh, all the equipment that you need because uh, being left out especially if you're doing long distance and trail riding um, it's just not a pleasant uh, deal to <laughs> go walking miles all right guys thanks for tuning in and uh, we'll catch you on the next one adios